Hello everyone. This is Sheila Ratna Bansode from Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. As a part of machine drawing curriculum, we are going to see the topic freehand sketch, and in that we will be dealing with bearings. Learning outcomes. At the end of this session or at the end of this video, students will be able to draw different types of bearings. They will also understand the construction and applications of various bearings. Now, moving further, introduction to bearings. In different applications, we use shafts to transfer power from one element or machine elements to another or from prime over to the machine element. Now, this distance between the two either the prime over and the application might be more and the length of shaft goes on increasing. In such case to support the shaft we require bearings. When the length of shaft increases to have an intermediate supports we go for bearings. Bearings not only support the shaft but they also provide stability and free and smooth rotation of the shaft. They do not hinder the process of rotation, the process of power transmission for the shaft. So bearings are very much important as where you have rotational elements like shafts. Bearings also absorbs or balance the loads that are acting on the shaft. Now, the load on the shaft might act because of its self weight, the more the length, the weight of the shaft goes on increasing. Or because of certain imbalance in the prime mover or the application, there might be certain unavoidable forces. To some extent, the balancing of these forces or sustaining of these forces is also done by bearings. During rotation, there are certain forces developed, either axial or radial forces. These forces are also balanced with the help of bearings. No doubt, for different balancing of different loads, we go for different bearings. Then, bearings are classified as sliding contact bearing and rolling contact bearings. Let us see one example from each. Introduction to sliding contact bearing. Here, the shaft has a sliding contact with the bearing. The relation between the bearing and the shaft is in the form of sliding. Here, the friction is quite high as sliding comes into picture. Hence, as friction is high, more lubrication is required. And depending upon the direction of load, it is classified as journal bearing and thrust bearings. So, Sliding contact bearing prefer high lubrication as high friction is involved. Then journal bearings. Here the load on the bearing is perpendicular to the shaft. As you can see in the image, this is the shaft and this is the sectional lines are shown in the bearing. So the load is acting in perpendicular direction. This arrow indicates the load that is acting in perpendicular direction, perpendicular to shaft axis. This is the shaft axis and this is the load that is being acting. Now here the word journal comes into picture because journal is the part of the shaft that is in contact with the bearing. So this part, this dotted part, this total part is called as journal. This part is called as journal. Now in journal bearing we have types like solid journal bearing, bushed journal bearing and pedestal journal bearing or plumber block. Let us see each solid journal bearing. It is the simple and most common in journal bearings. Most simple form of journal bearing is solid journal bearing. It is made up of cast ions and the cylinder block with rectangular hose. We have a cylinder block with a rectangular hose here. This is the diagram of a solid journal bearing. 
here there is no provision for adjustment in case of wear as you can see this is a single entity being formed with the help of casting if there is certain misalignment in the rotation of the shaft there is no provision for alignment or provision to adjustment as you can see on screen then where as there is no provision for adjustment once the, there is wear and tear of the bearing you need to discard it and you have to apply the new bearing into the applications hence these kind of bearings are used where you have very low load on the bearing or the load on the bearing is quite small then you can see on screen this is the front view and this is the top view of the bearing here you can see a hole for lubrication this is the hole for clamping and in this hole your shaft fits this is a single unit no provision for adjustment hence called as solid then we have bushed bearing it consists of two parts it consists of two parts as you can see on screen one is the body part and the other is bush part now here body is made up of cast iron as we have seen it in uh, solid journal bearing also and bush are made up of small materials like brass bronze or gun metals and the bush is press fitted and can be easily renewed here you can see this unit this outer unit is a single form and here in this the bush are inserted by press fit so if there is certain misalignment and due to uh, over uh, period of use of time the bushes might get wear instead of replacing the bearing as a whole unit you can just replace the inserts this insert that are called as bushes and the bearing can be back to application by just merely replacing these kind of bushes this construction is similar to solid bush but this bush is solid journal bearing but addition of this bush makes this merely easy for replacement and adjustment of uh, misalignment here also you have a hole for lubrication as you can see on screen these are the holes for clamping on certain base and through this your shaft moves then we have pedestal bearing when you have very long shafts and require intermediate supports we go for pedestal bearing or plumber block it consists of a pedestal that is a base called as pedestal a cap and a bush split it into two halves this base is called as pedestal this are the bush these are the bushes and this is the cap this is the cap here the split parts facilitate easy assembly and periodical replacement as you can see this comes into two parts this is the upper part and this is the lower part so because of these two separate parts the replacement and maintenance is quite easy as compared to solid journal bearing and the bush type of bearing so here instead of replacing the whole bearing as a unit you can replace these bushes easily and you can separate these two parts so during replacement also the process is quite easy then the axial motion of the bush is prevented by flanges and rotary motion is prevented by a snug now as bush is inserted into this the rotary motion is provided uh, is prohibited with the help of these flanges and rotational here a snug is used a lock kind of feature or a insertion kind of feature that bearing has and gets fitted into the hole on the body so rotation and movement is fixed with the help of these flanges and with the help of these snugs here a hole for lubrication is also provided these two parts are joined with the help of nut and bolt arrangement we'll see an orthographic view of the same see this is the first part this is the topmost part and this is the bottommost part body cap and this is the bush bearings or bushes nut and bolt arrangement is provided to connect the two parts 
here again we have a adjustment for hole to clamp then moving on to thrust bearing thrust bearings are used to support shaft subjected to axial loads and in that we have footstep bearing it is used to support vertical shaft under axial load shaft is terminated in the bearing you have to insert the shaft in this way the shaft end fits into this bearing then bush fitted in the body takes care of the radial load on the shaft and rotation of the bush is prevented by a snug here you can see a snug is provided here so that rotation and flanges are provided so that movement of the bushes is prohibited so this is journal bearing where the shaft is inserted from the top footstep bearing here you can see the front view and top view of the same these are the references thank you